Hello and welcome back to the Champions League Challenge Series on Football Manager 2022 where we are currently with Stau Bucharest in the Romanian second tier. Now since the last episode we've played a handful of games in the league which we'll go through in a little bit but we've also made one signing. It was a loan signing and I'll show you it now. Here he is, Nedad Lalic on loan from our league rivals Repensia Timisoara. He's a Serbian centre-back brought in on loan as a lot of the players were... There was murmurs in, in the weekly meeting. I was told that there was murmurs from some of the, the more senior members of the squad saying that they felt we lacked depth at centre-back. So I listened to them. I brought him in. He's a, a decent backup for our, our first choice centre-back pairing of Beta and Wallace. So that's why he's in. And I also noticed at the end of the last episode... Well, when that was over, that I forgot to mention uh, a loan out. At least I think I did. Cesar Jejeknianu murdered that name. Apologies, Cesar. He has gone on loan to Metalurgistul Kugir. Um, this was to free up some wage budget, but it, in order for us to get a free transfer in, but none of the people that are on my, my shortlist currently have wages that are suitable. This freed up £103 per week in the wage budget, but yeah, no, no one that's good enough is on that amount of money anyway. So the first game that we played off camera was a local derby. It's the only Bucharest derby that there is going to be in this league. There's obviously quite a few in the top tier of Romania. But it was against Metaloglobus Bucharest. And you can see here that we, we battered them 3-0. Goals from Bajanaru, a, a first ever goal from Adrian Ili II. And a goal from Huiban was enough to get us the victory at home against the fellow Bucharest side. We've had a few injuries in the, the games that we played off camera as well. Vasil Buhoescu pulled his groin in training in the lead up to this match. He was out. He was, he was out for six to nine days eventually. And there is one of the goals which I do want to show you. It's Huiban's goal. It's a hell of a cross and a hell of a finish to, to wrap up the game for us. So it's Barbalescu takes a corner. He gets the second ball in here, volleyed to the back post the, near the edge of the box, and Huiban with a beautiful finish to make it three. We then faced Unirea. Constanta and we picked up another victory in this one a hat-trick for Chapulium the first hat-trick that I've had on this year's game so far he's been in good form there's bad news about him but we'll get to that in a little bit we did however pick up an injury before this game winger Adrian Popper picked up an injury which was a bruised thigh so that kept him out for between six and nine days can't remember exactly that was just how long it was given that he would be out for Dragos Huiban came in for Passionel up front because of that goal that I just showed you that he scored against Metal Globus. And then their two goals, I'm going to show you them both. So this first one was caused by terrible goalkeeping, in my opinion. Ardelian gets the ball here, he plays it forward to the eventual goal scorer Niga, who shoots and the ball just goes through the keeper's hands. Just terrible goalkeeping. And then their second goal in second half injury time is terrible defending. So it's beta there. Just decides to head it to the goal scorer. Just, yeah, terrible. We, we did somehow still manage to win, though, fortunately. We then faced Politenica Ayashi, who I think are one of the sides that got relegated from the top tier last season. Another 3-2 victory, coming back this time from two goals down in the first half. Goals from Zaharia and Bajanaru. Bajanaru has been, he's, he's been banging them in for fun. You may notice a new player in the lineup for this game. Orion is a right back. He was brought in because our usual man, who we rely on as being our under 19 player, Claudio Denos, was in need of a rest. So Darius Orion is also under 19. He's a right back. He's not too great, but he's got decent potential. Um, unfortunately, he's on loan with us, so he's not a permanent player with us. But he, he's been brought into the first team for moments when Claudio Denos is not available. And the reason for us looking to perform a lot better in the second half of this game was a formation change and tactic change so we went from our 4-4-2 route one style to the 4-2-3-1 with wing play and that completely turned the game around and after this game we found ourselves all the way up in third in the league table now just before we played this game against Unirea Dej the parent club of Adrian Illy the second came to me and they were very concerned about the fact that I've not played him not been playing him in his agreed position which is left midfield as a winger, apparently. I hadn't... I had forgotten about that completely. He'd been doing a lot better at left-back. Since then, we've obviously... They've said that they'll, they'll recall him from the loan if we don't play him as left midfield. So I've not really been able to play him because we have 
better left midfielders than him. But in this game, we somehow managed to, to escape with a draw. It was a bit of a ghoul mouth scramble for the equalising goal from Passionel, but we got it and we, we continued our unbeaten run. And then the final game that we played was against FC Buzau. And before this game, Claudio Denos fractured his draw in training. So he is out for between four and five weeks, which means Orion, the, the young right back, is the man who was going to be our under-19 representative going forward for the next five weeks or so. You can see here, though, he had a pretty decent game. He, he got the assist for Chipurlu's goal. Um, we took the lead, but we couldn't hold on to it. Costosia getting an equaliser for FC Bazaar, but uh, still remaining unbeaten as we head into today's games. And another bit of news on Claudio de Nos. We've actually signed into a professional deal, um, a three-year contract. It's on £140 per week. Uh, that shouldn't be a, an issue as long as we get promotion this season. Um, our finances are... They're not great, to be honest. We're, we're slightly overspending on the wages now thanks to that professional contract that I've offered Denos, and our balance is not too great either. And then heading into this game, the, third, the first of today's games against Hermannstadt, Bogdan Ciperlu got injured. He tore his knee ligaments in training. He's out for between three and five months. Our, I believe he's our top scorer. He should be our top scorer. He's scored a load of goals this season. Yeah, he is our top goal scorer. He's out for quite a long time so we're gonna to have to try and get by without him but as i said today's first match is against Hermannstadt. it's two of the the better sides in the league ourselves and them they were expected to finish top i believe at the start of the season and um, they were relegated from the top tier last season and you can see we're fifth currently in the table on 15 points they are second on 16 points so victory can take us above them today the team who are top Concordia Chiajna have a game in hand so they by the end of that game in hand they could end up being five points clear of anyone else in the league but we've just got to do what we can do and um, top two places once we get into the championship playoff if we get into the championship playoff we'll get promotion and then third and fourth fight it out in a playoff with two of the relegated teams from the team above if I'm understanding correctly let me know if I'm not so we are going to start this first game with our 4-4-2 route one Tactic and formation. We've got Balboro in goal as always. The, the youngster Darius Orion at right back. Wallace and Beta, our usual centre back pairing. And then George Kalantaru, who has, had been playing at right back when Darius Orion wasn't needed to be in the team and we had Claudio Dunos, but is, can play at left back just as well. So he's in at left back. We've got Adrian Popper right side of midfield in place of Claudio Dunos. Valentin Bobulescu and Bajanaru in centre midfield as always. Alex Andrew Zahara, who's doing well at left mid. And Vasil Buescu as target forward with Emilian Passionel as deep lying forward. Of course, no Chapurlu today or for the foreseeable. So we're in our red and blue standard home kit as we get the game underway. And this could be a chance very early on in the game. Hopefully it's for us and none of our players are going to do something stupid as we're, we're doing some nice passing play. That ball was a bit behind the left back, but he, he managed to, to salvage it. Zaharia with a ball forward to Kalantaru pulls it back for Bajanaru. And we're just slowly building things up. Nice long ball to Zaharia. He's two on goal. It's Zaharia. That's got to be a penalty. Surely it is. Penalty in less than a minute. Bejan's being summoned over. I don't know what happened there. I don't think he got sent off. But Buhawescu to take the lead. And he scored. I thought that had gone wide because I didn't see the flashing goal for about a second. But he's managed to get it in the back of the net. The striker. First goal of the season for him, Vazil Buhuescu, who's been a bit unfortunate with injuries so far this season. Nothing major, just little ones. That one that kept him out for six to nine days, and then he had a, a bruised ankle as well, which kept him out for a couple of days. Missed uh, one of the games as well. Nastasi with the corner, and that's gone over everybody, and Bejan has got it now. Grammary out wide to Bejan, and it would be great if we could just push them a bit further back, possibly win the ball back. Stoica, just short passes amongst the opposition and Balauri's through on goal it's a great save from Balbarau nice to see with the corner kick to Stoica and that's just headed wide from him very good chance for Hermannstadt there corner kick for us can we get a second it would be great if we could Barbalescu to take it we've seen his assists in the past I showed you earlier that that stunning goal that I can't remember the name of the player the guy that begins with the name of his name begins with H it's Kalantaru Pulls it back for Bajanaru into Popper. Short passing, very short passing from us. And we win another corner from the opposite side. Surely there's more to this highlight than we've seen already. 
Bobulescu with the corner kick. Zaharia is there, headed away by Stoica, and Hermannstadt can get on the counter attack with Gramini. We've not got many players back. That ball is put in the space, but Orion is going to deal with that. Throw in for Hermannstadt on this right hand side. Mattel intercepted by Kalantari, but we've not got anyone up the field, so Bejan can collect that in defence as they come forward with the ball once more. Aput in a bit of space down this left hand side. We need Orion to do his job. Pull back to Nastasi now below. Ball into Petrescu with a header. It's just over the bar from him. Her Hermannstadt have had way better of this game than we have. But they somehow still find themselves one goal down. That could change with this highlight though. Mattel with a ball into the box. Below is there. And Bohikianu has equalised for Hermannstadt just before half time. It was apparently Popper's missed header that led to the goal. Disappointing from our right sided midfielder there. An action figure took the throw in and then got the ball into the box. Mattel below nodded it down and Buhachianu was there to smash it home. I think it might be another case of a half-time tactical change because this isn't doing it for us. We are, are getting completely overrun, which you would probably expect with a route one. Um, we'll, we'll go into the dressing room and we will change to our 4-2-3-1, I think. So we're going to put Emilian Pachinel as the shadow striker on attack and we're going to do our usual of putting the striker as a target forward on support. In terms of how people are playing, no one's playing particularly bad. We've got a few 6.5s, but nothing worse than that. So we'll keep it as it is as we head into the second half. So here we go, second half underway, but it looks like it's going to be another opportunity for Hermannstadt, which isn't great because they have been all over us, it seems, so far this game. As Nastasi finds Gramini, born to the box. Buhachani looking for a second. It's not a down, but Beta clears that, but can't get it out. And that is terrible goalkeeping again from Balboro, and we're 2-1 down. What on earth was he thinking? What? Uh, oh. I'm starting to, to wonder about him in goal. Mattel, the action figure with a, a curling shot, to be fair, but Balboro should be doing better than that. And you know, as a goalkeeper, you don't knock it down into your own six-yard box because then tap-ins like that happen. We're going to demand more, and we might have to make a change very soon unless we can get something here. It's Popper with the ball from a ball rescue header. Now Wallace in central defence. There's space for a man on the right, but nobody finds him. Beta plays it left instead to Kalantaro. Now it's Zaharia. Back to Bajanaru. Through ball to Zaharia. This is looking promising. Zaharia pulls it back. Passionel pulls it just wide. Much better play from us, though. More of that, please. Okay, we're 75 minutes into the game, and I think it's time to make a personnel change. Not exactly sure who. Dragos Huiban. We're going to bring him on for Alexandru Zaharia at left wing. And then Liviu Bajanaru is not having the best of times in centre midfield, so Julian Badea is going to get a rare appearance for us there. And we'll confirm the subs, and I think we'll also go attacking for the last 15 minutes because we do need... Do need to win really. I'm gonna fire the team up as well. Six minutes left. It's telling me that Adrian Popper's a bit injured, but he's a bit tired, sorry, but he's one of our better performing players, so I don't really want to take him off. But we will. We'll we'll bring Rajdan on for Adrian Popper. See if he can do anything in this last six minutes or so as we have a corner. Barbalescu with the ball in, and that's headed away by Bejan. We'll switch to very attacking for injury time. I don't think it's going to make any difference, and it hasn't. So our unbeaten run in the league has been ended by Hermannstadt, a side who were relegated last season, to be fair. We were obviously promoted, so a 2-1 victory is not too bad, I guess, if you look at it that way. But still disappointing. But any defeat's disappointing to me because I want to win every game. So that result leaves us still in the top six. We're still we're fifth in the table. There's quite a few teams who haven't played yet, um, but only one of those can overtake us, and that's Unirea Dej. So we should still end this match week in the top six. That win actually takes Hermannstadt up to the top of the table, but as I said, Concordia, Chiajna do have a game in hand. They've dropped points today, only managing a draw against Unirea Slobotia. And our usual checkup of how Astra Gyurgyu are doing not great. They've uh, they've they've managed to pick up four points so far this season. Still on minus ten, so things aren't looking good for them. And I've just realised who our next opponents are. They are the team who are what have one game in hand on Hermannstadt and are currently second. Concordia Chiajna. So this this could be a, a telling 
a telling episode for how our season's going to go. We need to pick up a win away from home against Concordia Chiajna. Hopefully we can. So here we are for the game against top of the table, Concordia Chiajna. Let's hope we can get a result in today's game. There has been a few changes since the last match. So we are bringing Adrian Illy II in as a left midfielder. We're going to put him on his preferred role, which we've obviously been tooled off for not playing him in. And then Dragos Huiban is in for, per, what's his name? Per Passionel up front. So Passionel was our second under 20 player in the side. That's the reason Adrian Illy's come in at left midfield to become that second under 20 person which meant we could bring in Dragos Huiban, which is the change that we wanted to make. So we're going to go route one still. Um, we've still got the, the youngster at right back. We've still got Balboro in goal. We're giving him a couple more games. If he doesn't improve, then we'll think about changing him. Or we will change him, I should say. Hoping for a better performance from both our centre midfielders today. They didn't do too well against Hermannstadt. So hopefully they can improve on that performance today. So free kick early on, not for us, and it's collected nicely by Balboro though. Long ball forward from him towards Buhuescu, but he can't win it in the air, but we do get it with the right back, Orian, who is in a very advanced position, moving in on goal now. Orian with a shot, and it's just over the bar from him. That would have been, it said at the bottom there, it was almost one of the goals of the season. It definitely would have been up there. Balboro with the goal kick. Doesn't really aim that for any of our players, and it's with Alexei at the back for Concordia. Lazar. Switches play nicely to Popescu on the right-hand side. Popescu with a chance to get a ball in. Karamian is in the box. Popescu to Kudrea, and that's wide from him. Concordia, Chiajna, you can see why they are one of the better sides in this league so far in this game. As a ball is with Kudrea on the left-hand side in an advanced position. Plays it back to the left-back, Alexei. We really need to win the ball back, and I think we might have to change our formation again. Um, route 1 doesn't seem to be working too well for us although I guess these are the sorts of teams that you would expect us to be getting beaten by both uh, Concordia and Hermannstadt as Karamian is through on goal Benita has just saved our goalkeeper from a, another horrendous mistake there a brilliant goal line clearance from Better, but the, the pressure just keeps piling on us as Lazar has a shot from the edge of the box and that's off the crossbar and is going to hopefully get cleared by Kalantaru we're going to go to slightly more defensive rules, I think. So we'll bring Kalantaru down to support from the attack role, and then we'll bring Orion down to defend from the support role. And we'll also drop our deep line playmaker to defend as well. And hopefully that just gives us a bit more cover, because uh, we're being a bit overrun at the minute. We will somehow managed to hold on to a 0-0 draw at half time. I don't know how. The XG for Concordia is a lot better than ours. We've not had a shot on target yet today. Um, lots of long-range shots, I think. Uh, work to do, I would say. We've we've got Bahuescu on a, a 6.4. Popper's also on a 6.4. So could possibly think about changing those two. And I think that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do our usual, or our occasional, I should say, 4 4 one, one tactic. So Bahuescu is going to make way. And we'll bring on Emilian Passionel, who, of course, is the man who Huiban came into the squad for. We'll play him as a shadow striker on attack. Huiban's going to be the target forward on support. I'm also tempted to take Popper off. We've got Florin Razdan, who's not had much of a chance so far this season. So we'll bring, bring him into the side and see if that can do anything for us. 69 minutes gone, there or thereabouts, and this, this, this isn't really working for us. We're going to change the tactic up again. We're going to play... The, the wing play formation, the 4-2-3-1 formation, it's more of a positive one. So that's a bit of a risk given how much under the cosh we've been today. But hopefully that the fact we've been under the cosh is just because of how sort of negatively we've been approaching the game. And we're gonna we're gonna take can we take Adrian Lee off? I think we can. Yes, we'll bring Alexandru Zaharia on at left a side of attacking midfield. He can stay as the inverted winger. Passinel can stay as a shadow striker. And Razdan can be a winger on attack. And then Huiban can be the talk forward on support still. So it's Balboro. Can we create an opportunity for ourselves? They've been few and far between 
in this game so far. The only one I really remember is the the, the attempt that our right back had on goal after a long, amazing run. It's been all Concordia Chiajna, and they look like they're coming forward again. It's Lazar. He's into the box now, crosses it to the back post. Does Manu on the edge of the box, and that is a goal that would be it's just perfect to win any game, to be honest. I can't complain about that. The goalkeeper had no chance with that one. Um, someone whose name is very similar to Lukaku there, Lulaku, um, had the ball, but it was Dushmanu who slams it home on the volley from the edge of the box, and we are deservedly a goal down, and I think we're going to move to a more attacking mentality as well, because you can see we've yet to have a shot on target today. We need to have a shot on target, I'm sorry. Demand more. Very attacking. We've had a shot on target. There we go. It's a small victory. In a, an episode that has been pretty pretty disappointing, brought back down to earth, I would say, in this episode. Two defeats out of two. And that result leaves us in sixth place. So we're still in the top six, which is the, the championship playoff places. However, Politecnica Timisoara have a game in hand on us and can get above us if they win that game in hand. So we could end this game week being outside the top six for what I think would be the first time so looking ahead to the next episode and depending on how we get on in the Romanian Cup, we are going to come back for the Astra Giorgiu, or Astra Giorgiu, however you pronounce that, league game. That's simply just because I feel we can win that one. Two defeats in today's episode. It's a bit of a downer. Hopefully in the next episode we can pick up a victory against Astra Giorgiu and hopefully we'll beat them in the cup as well because that's who we play in the fourth round of the Romanian Cup. In the league, off camera, I'll play the games against Unirea Slobotia, Sikits Zereda, Viterul Pandari Targu G, Universitate Cluj as well. Um, I've murdered all of those names. Terrible pronunciation from me. I apologise to any Romanian viewers. But that is it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it at least enjoyed it more than me if you have make sure to the like button subscribe to the channel to get all the content when it comes out hit the notification bell to stay notified and i'll see you next time